So last week, Leah and I made a video about our wardrobe, and in that video, we realized that we own one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight pairs of Levi jeans. I think we may have a problem. Hey team, welcome back to another Levi Save the World Hildebrand episode, the channel where we prove that you don't need to be a hero to save the planet. And today we're going to be talking about my weird and accidental obsession with Levi jeans. And we are going to fix up probably the oldest pair of Levi jeans that I've ever owned, these majestic jean shorts. To be honest, those shorts have seen better days. And to be honest, this video is sponsored by Skillshare. Now, if you're a member of the team and you've clicked that subscribe button and rang the little bell, then you probably watched the video that I posted a couple weeks ago about my minimalist wardrobe journey. And like halfway through that video, I realized that I had somehow managed to only own Levi jeans. Like every single pair of pants that I own is made by Levi's. <laughs> and I had no idea before I made that video. So we are gonna hop right into that, but first we need to leave this room because the audio is gonna drive me crazy and I'm the one editing this video, so let's go. Now, if your first instinct was that I bought Levi jeans because my name is Levi, you are not correct. I mean, that, that would be a logical thing for someone to do who has an ego as artificially inflated as mine, but it actually gets even worse because my family has names that in some weird sort of way reconfirm that idea. See, my parents' names are Guy, Gene, and I am Levi, and so a cool way to remember all of our names that I've been using since I figured this out is Guy wears Levi's jeans. I promise you, it's, it is still not the reason why I bought all those pants. These were in fact the first pair of brand name jeans that I had ever owned. And I got them in my last year of high school, which means as a 28 year old man, I've had those suckers for about a decade. Yeah, I'm honestly kind of surprised that Liam married me too. In addition to all this, I'm not buying Levi's because they are some super green, environmentally friendly jean company, because they're really not. Levi jeans have run the gamut of all the fast fashion problems that we've seen over the years, and they've corrected a number of them, which is pretty good. They have an entire lineup called Well Thread that is made out of hemp. They have a patented water saving technology called Water Less. They do have certain repair boutique services available in some of their stores, and they encourage people to use their clothes as long as possible. But the real reason that I buy so many pairs of Levi jeans is because they're always in the thrift store. Between Levi's iconic brand presence in the fashion industry since 1853, and the fact that their jeans are decent quality, there's a very good chance that any thrift store pant shelf that you look at right now has a couple of pairs sitting there. And since I exclusively buy my pants secondhand, it just naturally came to be that this is what I owned. So today we are going to celebrate the continued legacy of Levi wearing Levi's by repairing his oldest Levi's to their former glory. If I can figure out how. Now I'm not opposed to wearing a pair of ripped up old jean shorts, but there's a few things on these shorts that I really think need to be repaired. So this is where my pocket goes for my phone, but as you can see, there's this big rip here. So I can't tell you the number of times that I've been standing here and I put my phone in my pocket and it falls onto the floor. But I also need to repair the coin pocket because I don't know about you, but I actually use the heck out of these things, obviously. Most importantly is like, I have this big spot right here that's ripping up. Yeah, there you go, there you go. Now you can really see it. That's good. Get right in there. <laughs> so the plan is we're going to find a sewing machine that is apparently somewhere in the garage and then I am going to learn how to sew stuff and fix my own pants. 
don't show a whole bunch of like messy stuff. Well, like this. No, okay. I'm, okay, I, you're just gonna make make us look bad. <laughs> this is uh -huh. our old mattress. I see it. I see it. You actually see it already? Really? Oh my god. This is your mom's sewing machine? Yeah. When was the last time this thing was used? Well, if this is the one that's actually my mother's, then uh, she's she died 30 year, over 30 years ago. <laughs> so, uh... My first hint that this wasn't going to go exactly as planned is when it took us about five or ten minutes to set up the sewing machine. We have a sewing machine. <laughs> From there, it was the very simple task of simply getting the thread to the needle, which, again, took a lot longer than we thought it was going to. But eventually, we got it sort of working, and I started working on the project until... Pull this thing out. You have to like figure out. You have to Turns out that these things are a lot more complicated than they look. I ran out of thread and I realized I don't actually have the ability of rethreading it because none of these spooly things fit on the sewing machine. So I decided that at that point it was time to call a friend. What, what, what happened there? I don't know what I'm doing. I think I could figure it out if I had a sewing machine that worked. My lifeline was Leah's Aunt Marilyn, who has experience and a functioning sewing machine that she would let me borrow. So I'll do it on my machine if it works. Okay, beautiful. <laughs> oh my gosh, I'm so nervous. Okay, I'll, uh, I'll pack up my stuff and I'll head over there. Okay, I'll see you soon. Okay, bye. Bye, Marilyn. <laughs> Now, you might be saying, Levi, why even bother? This is obviously not something that you're good at. You should just quit. Levi, stick to making videos. And I would agree with you because I honestly think that things like sewing require patience and I don't have patience. And I do think that whether you repair your clothes yourself or you get somebody else to, it's an extremely important thing that we should all be doing more. We're also ensuring that that's another piece of clothing that doesn't end up in the landfill this year. I can't even believe you're doing this. I can't believe I did, come on in. Right off the bat, I knew that I was going to be in good hands. Marilyn already had the sewing machine set up and fully threaded so that I could do the job I needed to do. She explained the basic functionality and how she thought that I should go about doing it. And then, it was my turn. Um, but at the moment... That, wow, that, if this works, Marilyn, I, maybe I will become a... A seamster. A seamster. seamster. <laughs> now, while a seamster is probably not a career choice that I'm bound to be pursuing, this actually went a lot better than I was expecting it to. And at the end, I had some tangible results to be happy with. Okay, so that's the, the patch job. This is what it looks like on the other side. <laughs> I think we did it. Well, the start, we're, we're, we just started it. I then decided to cut off some of the excess fabric sitting around the patch on the back because I thought it looked nicer. And then I tackled the front pocket, which was definitely a lot harder than I was expecting. Okay, so um, we have now completed a butt patch of glorious magnitude. Um, I tried to do a pocket patch and I would say that it didn't work super well, but the phone will no longer fall through there, which was the point, I'll remind you. And uh, then I think we're actually donezo. Send a big thanks to Marilyn. Marilyn, well, then the whole the whole internet community says thank you. Oh yeah, <laughs> with my COVID hairdo, yes. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> we both have COVID hairdos. <laughs> After a quick thank you and farewell to Marilyn, I drove home and started working on the coin pocket. And once that was finished, my beautiful jorts were done. Now, before we get into the final reveal of my fully renovated jean shorts, I want to thank the sponsor of this video, Skillshare. Now, if you don't already know what Skillshare is, it's an online learning community. There are literally thousands of classes for curious and creative people just like yourself. You can explore new skills, deepen existing passions, and get lost in creativity. Now, I have a lot of really nice things that I could say about Skillshare for sponsoring this video, but I have a poem that was written that I feel fits the situation perfectly. 
Let me just read this with you really quick. The world is a book, and those who do not use Skillshare read only one page. We use Skillshare not to escape life, but for life not to escape her. Pretty freaking unbelievable, right? Now maybe poetry isn't your thing, so let me spell this out a little bit more clearly. You can use Skillshare to learn pretty much anything. You might want to learn about sewing or baking, but you don't have an Auntie Marilyn in your life to help you, so Skillshare can maybe fill that gap a little bit. In fact, there is a whole series on Skillshare called How to Use a Sewing Machine and Tools. That is a video that I should have watched. But it's not just the basics. There are whole videos about how to make full pieces of clothing from scratch and how to market and develop a clothing company by yourself. A lot of people just require that push to get themselves started. And Skillshare is an incredible way to arm you with the knowledge and the skills to make you feel like that first step isn't so intimidating. And this quote, I feel, really sums that up well. Explore. Dream, discover. A journey of a thousand miles begins with a Skillshare free trial. <laughs> I freaking, I don't know. I, maybe this is dumb, but I think it's hilarious. And so the first thousand people to click the link down in the description get a free two month premium Skillshare membership trial to try out all of those new adventures risk-free. And now we're gonna go and check out how those shorts look. Ew, why are you not wearing a shirt? Oh, no, I don't know, I thought so that you could see It's the... more dramatic. Did you do that yourself? Yeah. Don't, yes. don't sound so surprised. <laughs> but look at my butt. <laughs> The shorts are done. Uh, they meet Leah's approval. Leah is Great. definitely the one in our relationship who actually does repair on a regular basis because she has the patience for it. <laughs> what What do you think is important about repair? Like, why do you think? I think it's that intentionality, right? You're gonna spend some time sitting down with this piece of clothing that you normally just throw on and go about your day, but you're like, oh, okay, I'm actually gonna take the time to look after it to make sure that I have it for that much longer. And there's also something really special about it because, you know, you buy a piece of clothing and it's great, but probably a whole bunch of other people own that same piece of clothing. True. And then as soon as you modify it or change it or fix it, then it just, every time, it becomes more unique. It becomes really your. These are your shorts. Like, no <laughs> one else has these pair of, like, 10-year-old word jeans are now jean shorts. I mean, they better not. I would be choked. Oh, can you imagine? Repair in general is something that I think more people should do. And Patagonia actually agrees with me. They have a slogan called, repair is a radical act. And the idea being that our whole society is sort of built off this idea that you should continue to consume as much as possible and that's what keeps so many of our businesses alive. But as soon as you change that and you keep something and you extend its life beyond what is expected, you're doing something kind of radical. You are no longer just a cog in the capitalist machine. <laughs> Throw <laughs> some marks on you. <laughs> boom, boom, boom. So these shorts are a story. They are a experience that I've had and they were a learning opportunity for me. They're literally a tapestry of your lived experiences. <laughs> Actually though. Right? And maybe they look janky to you, but I think that these are just like such fun shorts to have, so. They're um, so quintessentially Levi. But regardless of your opinion on uh, my jean shorts or my Levi's obsession, I wanna thank you for watching this video, for taking some time out of your day to spend some time with me and sometimes Leah, because Hi. I know that we really appreciate it. And of course, if you are subscribed to this channel, then we will see you in the next one. Bye. You're beautiful. It's too tall.